Um, so as you said, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got to this point with the digital archive um, and walk you through the website a little bit. Um, so the, <laughs> um, the work on the digital archive started in the summer of 2013 as part of an uh, annual workshop that the Humanities Digital Workshop um, puts on every year. Um, and during the six-week workshop, um, undergraduates and graduates work on faculty-sponsored projects, um, one of which was the Merrill Digital Archive. Um, my unit, Scholarly Publishing, has been working with HGW as part of this workshop for several years, and we've um, played many different roles as part of that. Um, the students in the workshop received basic training on a lot of different aspects of digital humanities, like um, data entry, XML encoding, data visualization, research, so they get kind of a little bit of everything. Um, and the training that the students get at the HGW, along with the input from scholarly publishing and our supervision, we're really able to leverage everyone's skills to create forward-thinking projects. Um, so during the 2013 um, workshop, um, of which um, Annalisa was a part, and um, she also worked with an undergraduate student on this, uh, the initial work for the archive, um, they really focused on scanning all of the material in the archive, which was a lot of hundreds and hundreds of pages. Um, so they really got a lot of work done on just getting the digitization out of the way. Um, they also process the images, so a lot of um, like color correction and um, creating derivatives for the website and things like that. Um, and then they also um, created metadata for the images uh, using a form like you see up here. So this is an example of one of the scans that they did, and then um, I don't believe this is the actual associated metadata, but you get an idea of kind of um, what they were working on. So um, while they were doing all of this, I worked on creating the digital exhibit itself. We used um, Omeka digital exhibit software. So um, I created the initial digital exhibit and then trained the students on how to ingest the images and metadata into the exhibit. And then um, we all kind of worked together, our little project team here, um, to figure out which sections um, the exhibit should be divided into, which, which things should go where. Um, and we sort of ended up with, actually this is the second version of the sections. Um, we had a, an initial version that I think was missing one of these sections. But um, we kind of arrived at presenting the entirety of um, the uh, Book of Ephraim. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> Correct me. Um, and then the entirety of the Ouija transcripts, um, and then some information about Merrill, some information about the archive. Um, and some other additional resources, like pointing to Tim's site. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through everything, then I'll show you the website at the end. So um, the next logical step for us um, in the digital project was to encode everything in XML. So this would allow us to make everything searchable on the site, so that um, you know it's a little bit easier to read, and um, people can make better use uh, for their research. So um, work really picked up on that in um, the following summer, 2014, when Heidi came onto the project, um, along with another graduate student. And they, their main task was really to figure out how to encode this stuff. Um, and she'll talk more about that later, um, about the process they went through. Um, but they, they figured out some encoding guidelines and then wrote up some standards that we could pass on to other students who will continue work on the archive. And work is still ongoing, um, so we have some students that work for us in Scholarly Publishing that will um, ask to keep working on the project. Um, I was kind of worried initially because we did one section over a year and I really didn't want this to be a 26 year project. <laughs> Um, but luckily, we've been able to ramp up a little bit. Um, so working on the XML encoding, um, I worked on an initial kind of document model for them to outline how we might go about encoding this information. Um, but not being a subject matter expert, I kind of um, turned it over to Heidi and Claire to figure out what things would be really important to Merrill researchers to know about this material. Um, so this is part of what they came up with. So the snippet at the bottom is two lines of a poem with his um, with Merrill's revisions, and then the top is the XML encoding representing this little snippet. 
so you can see it was a very involved, tedious process to just do you know, one page of a draft or something. Um, so that's kind of why it was so slow at the beginning, because it was so involved. But um, once things got going, we were able to make a lot of progress. Um, so currently on the website, we have the entirety of Section A encoded and available online. And we have all the galley proofs for A to Z. So um, yeah, so we've made a lot of progress there. And it's all um, up and available. So the next thing we had to think about was, OK, we have some of this material encoded. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to display it on the website? So we started working with um, Steve Pentecost from HGW, and he came up with this um, image viewer for us to integrate into the website. So there's now uh, a magnifying function so you can hover over the text and uh, blow it up. And then there's also a zoning function where you can roll over sections of the page and then it um, shows you know, the corresponding, corresponding transcript um, what the text actually reads. Oh, sorry, too early. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to walk you through the website a little bit to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is the website. Um, and so this is what you see when you go to the home page. Um, so you see the different sections of the website outlined there. Um, so like I said, we have the entirety of the Ouija transcripts on there. Um, these are just images. They don't have um, associated transcripts with them. Um, they're all organized by our archival folder. And then the Maryland process section, um, we have the Merrill archive, which is the entirety of all the materials towards um, the book of Ephraim. And then we have, um, so as I mentioned, we have the galley proofs encoded for every section. And then for section A, we have everything. So it's really quite a lot of material, and the students really were able to get a lot of this done over a couple of years. Um, so just to show you the transcript and images. So when you click on um, one of these accordion items, it'll drop down and show you all of the metadata associated with the particular draft or notes um, or galley proof, whatever it is. Um, then you can view. For section A, you can view the transcript and images here. So here's the image, and then you can roll over this, and it will highlight over there what it actually says. Um, and if all of you are familiar with Merrill's handwriting, you probably know how difficult it was to actually transcribe this. Um, so that took a lot of time as well. Um, but the zoning feature is really nice so that you can just roll over these bits and see actually what you wrote. Um, and then the magnifier, um, so you can roll over an image and blow it up to see actually what the text says. So, um, so that is kind of a brief overview of how we got here and the website. Um, and I, are we doing questions now? Or I think we were. Okay, at the end. Then I'll hand it off to you.